In the workshop, cutting out my new set of spanners, packing the toolbox, and then a live steam test of a Stuart Models boiler feed pump. If you bought a set of these spanners, you could cut them out using a hacksaw, but bear in mind this is stainless steel, so it's quite hard to cut, surprisingly hard. I'm using a very over-the-top, far too big bandsaw, being very careful not to cut my fingers off at the same time. And talking about my weary, battle-worn fingers, I don't want to cut them either with the sharp pieces of metal left from cutting the sprue off between the spanners. So I'm taking the time to remove this using my belt sander. These spanner sets are all laser cut from a sheet of stainless steel, so dimensionally they are quite accurate and of course they're not going to go rusty. Once I'd finished cleaning up the spanners, it was time to pack them into my toolbox. Normally in my home workshop I work in a state of perpetual chaos. The bench is usually a mess. The main thing is though, for speed of operation I know where everything is. But once a week when I go to the steam workshop and work with the team of professionals, I seem to spend a lot of time looking for tools. So now I take my own in this small toolbox. This week, video wise, I've had a bit of a problem. I finished this very large steam plant which sits on my bench. This steam plant is so big, there's no room on the bench to do any more realistic work, and I've got quite a few interesting jobs coming up. The owner of the steam plant was supposed to have picked this up on Thursday, but the weather was too bad it was snowing. So instead, he's calling in tomorrow, which is Sunday. What I'm doing at the moment is setting up the boiler and in this clip pumping some water into the boiler so that I can test a live steam feed pump. I've already tested this pump using compressed air. I'll just light the boiler. There it goes. As I was saying, I need to test this boiler feed pump using live steam. A word of caution. Whenever you see an advert on the internet, whether it be a private advert or on an auction site for a steam engine, and the advert says, not tested on steam, then be very careful, because not everything that will run on compressed air will run on steam. One of my customers recently sold a really nice steam plant with a Stuart No. 7 coupled to a Blackgates boiler. I made a video about it last week, and it sold very quickly. After the sale was completed, the buyer contacted me via email. He's asked me to fit reversing gear to the engine, and luckily there's some part finished reversing gear with the engine. Then he went on to ask me if I could make a steam turret, so the steam boiler could be used to provide some steam for other steam engines that he has in his collection. He also said he would like a steam powered boiler feed pump fitting, and it just so happens that I have one, this small Stuart Models boiler feed pump. And that just about brings us up to date to this very moment, and that's why, very conveniently, I've connected this small feed pump to the boiler on the large steam plant. And as soon as I put some steam into the engine, it starts to run. Note to self, when running steam-powered boiler feed pumps, it's a really good idea to connect a pipe to the water outlet of the pump. And that's what I'm doing here. The pump is running quite erratically. That's because the steam pump is still a little bit on the tight side. This should get better with a little bit of running. I've not adjusted this pump at all, this is just the way I received it. And because it's tight, the main piston is not travelling the full distance yet. But it will do after a while. As I move the piston manually, I can feel that it's quite tight at one end of the stroke. But the good news is, the pump is pumping water, so it's doing what it's supposed to do. And after a while, the piston rod starts to travel the full distance. This pump, like most of these small Stuart pumps, is very sensitive to adjustment. And the problem with it is, the gland is a little bit tight at the steam cylinder end. The water cylinder is perfect, it's pumping water beautifully. Unlike a Southworth engines pump, which is a double acting pump, this pump is just single acting, but as you can see, it's pumping plenty of water for its small size. And after a very small adjustment of the gland at the steam cylinder end, the piston rod, which is also the pump ram, is travelling the full distance now. From my experience of these small pumps, they always leak a little bit around the steam cylinder because the parts are very, very tiny. And in this case, it's almost impossible to get a spanner in to tighten the nut that holds the cylinder onto the main casting. These two hexagon bolts that are really the only thing holding the steam cylinder to the casting are very difficult to get to. And the only spanners that I can get in there, guess what, are the Blackgate's engineering spanner sets in fact, the very same Blackgates Engineering spanner sets that I cut out on the bandsaw at the beginning of this video. The tapping noise you can hear is the shuttle valve going back and forth inside the steam chest, and that's moving very smoothly, which, believe me, is not always the case. 
Pumps of this type, in the full size, often referred to as weir pumps, generally had a reputation for being a bit quirky and problematic at times, so making a live steam boiler feed pump work successfully at this size is quite a feat of engineering. If you're thinking about making one of these, I would try and talk you out of it. They are very difficult to make, and even if you make it, it's not bound to work. This one, luckily, is very well made. I turned the gas supply off to the boiler a while back, so there's not really much steam coming out of this pipe at all. But as I move the piston rod back and forth by hand, which is much freer now, by the way, you can still hear the clicking of the shuttle valve as it goes back and forth in the steam chest. Once I remove the piece of silicone rubber pipe from the inlet and open the steam valve, you can really see how little steam there is available in the pipe, next to nothing. So where do I go from here? Well, first of all, I'm going to put the steam pipe back on the original large steam plant because the customer's picking that up tomorrow. Then I'm going to run this engine in a little bit more using compressed air, after which I will fit it to the 7A steam plant. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.